Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of Banjo-Kazooie. This is episode 4, I believe, and we're going to start this episode off with not really a bang, really. We're going to be learning more about Grunty. She wears a reinforced girdle under that repulsive dress of hers. What else can we learn? She's also got this nasty pet dog whose name is Leg Chomp. I didn't get to see that too well. And she sings in her own band, Grunty, and the Cauldron Crew. Apparently they're awful. Now, like I said, we're going to need to be knowing that information much later in the game. Like, literally right before the end of the game. So, either write it down or just try and remember it as best as you can. One important thing to notice, or to know, is that every game will have different facts, or I guess you could say, about Grunty. So, you can't just take the things that I've seen in my game and apply it to your game necessarily. Because they might have changed for your game. But, since now that we've done that, that's our second time, I think, talking to Brentilda. We can come up here and open up our fourth world, I believe, and that would be Bubble Gloop Swamp. If you compare it to Clanker's Cavern, I would have to say it is much easier. And I might have, I don't mean to like toot my own horn or anything, I might have made Clanker's Cavern look easy, but that's because I've been playing it for a while, or you know, playing the game for a while. I know a lot of people mess up and kind of give up at Clanker's Cavern, because there's so much underwater stuff, it's kind of hard to control sometimes, so. If you've made it past Clanker's Cavern, Bubble Gloop Swamp will not be a, a problem for you at all. But, well actually I was going to say maybe I could go back to Treasure Trove Cove and get those Mumbo Tokens I missed. But they're not really necessary. Like I said, they don't count for your completion and if you look, I have 9 tokens. And to transform the next time I'm only going to need, I think 10. And I'll find, whoops, didn't mean to, oh my, no run away, oh that was close. In the next level, I'm only going to need 10 Mumbo Tokens to transform, so... Unless in the next... Did I say the next episode? I think I did. In the next level, I'll only need 10 Mumbo jo Tokens to transform. So, unless I need a whole lot in the next level after that, which I probably will, I'll probably go back and get those later. Now, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw, there's a huge Grunty statue in the middle of the room there, and there's another Brentilda back there. There's a Jiggy like in her in the middle of that statue that you can't get quite yet so we'll be getting that later all right so the, the level that we need to go to is over there and we're gonna go in there you know we're gonna do this level in this episode but there's a move that we need to learn if you see that little tunnel i guess you could call it over there we need to go down that tunnel before we leave this level that didn't make any sense, but it'll uh, it'll make sense in just a second. Just hear me out. If we come back way over here, I like how they tried to hide this... I was going to say enemy skill. I don't know what's wrong with me today. This isn't Final Fantasy VII. They tried to hide this move. And it is kind of important because they're the waiting boots. And they're the green boots that you can see right here. I'm not sure if we've seen any of these so far in the game. If we have, though, we can't use them or we couldn't use them until we learn this. But what that does... And by the way, that was the only move in the swamp. What those boots do is allow you to walk through swampy areas, and we're going to demonstrate that here in a second. I don't know where they hid the boots, though. They might be back here. The thing is, you're supposed to get those boots and go through the swamp over there, but I'm not sure where they put the boots, to be quite honest with you. I thought they might have put them up here, but I guess not. I can try one uh, technique that I've seen. I'm not sure if it'll work on the Xbox, so if I die, I don't want to hear it too bad. But you can actually jump on the sides of this thing. Oh, it looks like it might work. Because you don't want to touch the swamp, because if you do, like, the piranha or whatever will get you. But it looks like I made it. I can't believe that worked. A lot of the stuff that works on the Xbox, or on the Nintendo 64, does not work on the Xbox. Like climbing that ant hill without the, without the ant, for instance. But the reason we needed to do that was to open that thing right there. And if I have enough Jiggies, I might as well just go ahead and open this. It looks like I have enough. This is going to be the next level after the one that we're going to do in this episode. But, well, actually, you know, I'm gonna, I was going to say, well, now we don't have to come back here after we're done with that. But we actually do. If you saw me break that rock or that ice or whatever that was a second ago, we're going to have to come back and do something with that later. Oh, might as well. You know what? I'm not going to ch take any chances. Might as well show you the boots anyway, because I don't think I've shown them to you yet. Obviously, I haven't, because I just learned the move. But see, now we're able to walk right in the swamp with no fear of having the piranhas, you know, come out and eat us. But I always thought that move where you could walk on the walls and stuff was kind of cool, so... I'm not sure, like, obviously, like I said, there are boots somewhere around here that you're supposed to use to get back there, but I don't have any idea where they're at. Alright, now that we've taken care of that, 
we can actually go ahead and do the level. The first jiggy that we're going to have to kind of do... Whoops, I missed. Is this thing right here. you got to shoot the eggs into this golden crocodile. And it'll kind of... I was going to say transform, but it'll teleport to different areas around the level. And you got to find them basically. I think there's five of them that you got to find and shoot eggs into. And once you do, you get a jiggy. Whoops. I wish the the only complaint I have about collecting these things is I wish the the area that you could get them was a little bit bigger. Like I'm trying to think of a game like you know if you've ever played Spyro in the PlayStation One, it was a little bit easier to collect gems because if you got anywhere near them, pretty much they would it was like an area effect and it would just kind of gravitate towards you. I kind of like that about that game, and I kind of wish that it was like that in this game too. It would just make it easier to. I collect items, I guess, without having to be directly on the item. But you can see that is our 10th Mumbo Token, and we'll be transforming shortly. What they wanted you to do, by the way, to get these Jiggies... I did it again. Every episode, I guarantee I will call notes Jiggies and vice versa. But what they wanted you to do to get those was there's boots way over there on that platform where those stumps are at. And they wanted you to get those boots and run all the way over here and... That's just not, that's a waste of time. You might as well just jump in, take one hit, you know. Alright, and that was kind of a clever little jiggy right there. At least I didn't call it a note. Because you gotta, I don't know, I didn't explain it all that well. Actually, I didn't explain it at all. But, you just gotta do different moves on it. Like the ground pound, the beak buster, or whatever you want to call it. Or the, whatever this thing is called, I forgot. Or the rat -a move and stuff. Depending on where the X on the, on the egg is at, that's what the move you have to do. Now, the second Jiggy we're gonna do, we have to hit this little switch right here, and it makes a Jiggy pop up. Yeah, we can take our time, right? No. I like how they give you 45... Come on. I wonder what, through what mechanism, the Jiggy actually disappears in 39 seconds, you know? Like, or what's keeping it there in the first place. But hopefully we have enough time to take a little pit stop. Oh my, dang, he almost, like, flipped me off with his, uh, his mouth there. Any, I was gonna say, I hope we have enough time to get that. There's also a Mumbo token we need to get up there, and there's eggs. And there's also a Jinjo that we need to get, so... If I run out of time, it's not gonna be a big deal. You can just go back down there and hit the switch again. What would be more of a big deal would be if I fell off, you know... Actually, that's not even that big of a deal either. Because they knew that people were gonna have a problem with this game, or this level in particular. Because there are those, not honey, what are they called? Like the beehive things all over the place? Like you can see one right over there. They knew that people were going to have a problem with this level, so they put enough health all over the place. But now we got to fight, I'm not even sure what these things are called. They kind of look like frogs. I think they might be called flibbits or something like that. But the easiest way i found to take care of them is just to run into them with the, the wonder wing. Well, if I don't hit them, apparently it's not going to matter. I think I'm going to run out. Yep, alright, fine. At least I took care of, what, three of them? Otherwise, I'm not sure how you beat them. I guess you just gotta do this move over and over. Well, that was a little less hard than I thought it was gonna be. When I've actually... When I played it as a kid, I remember just taking them all out in, like, one swift thing with the Wonder Wing, but apparently I'm not that good anymore. Alright, so now where do we want to go? There's three branching paths we can go. I think we want to go this way, because I think this is where the uh, that gold frog thing went. Or crocodile, what am I talking about? And on the Nintendo 64, you could actually jump from these things. The point for this little area is you're supposed to break the huts. I think that might... Actually, no, I was gonna... In, uh, in Mario 64, the, every star had a name. I don't think the, the Jiggies in this level or in this game have a name. If you guys have played Mario 64, you know what I mean. But for this part, you have to break the huts and expose the shock jump pad things to jump higher. And the Nintendo 64 version, you didn't even need it. You could just stand on top of the huts and jump from one place to another. Like I said, not sure if that works on the Xbox, but I'm not going to be the one to try it and fail. But, we got that. And we can... Oh, are you kidding me? That was close enough. That's all the way on the other, the other side of the path there. One of the paths that we didn't take, so we'll be getting that in a second. And we also got a Mumbo token, if I didn't already say that and didn't see it for whatever reason. And here's a Jiggy. I think this is four already? Yes, it is. The thing about this level, it's, like I said, it's easier, I think, than Claker's Cavern. But I would say, overall, it takes more time. I don't know... Well, actually, I do know why. I'll show you the reason for that in a second. Well, let's come over here. We're, I don't know... Wait a minute. 
Oh yeah, I was like, I'm going crazy for a second. I was trying to remember where that golden crocodile thing was at. It's actually, it's over here. And then it's gonna, the final one is gonna be over there by that turtle. So I got confused there for a second. But let's go ahead and grab these boots here. Because unlike that one area by the egg, like, or actually like the area by the egg over there, there are some notes in the water over here. But I'm not gonna take the chance. I think there's four of them. Whoa, no! See, the camera will screw you over in this game. That is one of the big complaints that people have had about this game, or just a lot of Nintendo 64 platformers in general. Oh, I made it. That was close. He's probably gonna hit me in the water. Yep. Oh, come on! They... There we... I was about to get, like, <laughs> a little, uh, a little frustrated there for a second. But yeah, the camera sometimes will... will screw you over. Well, apparently I'm screwing myself over now, just jumping off of things because it will disorient you and you won't be able to go in the right direction and stuff like that. But anyway, like I was saying, that area over there has notes just like that area with the egg in it. But the difference is there's more notes, I think, in that area over a, a wider area. So I'm not going to take the chance and die in the lava, or not the lava, what am I talking about? What is this, Mario? In the swamp area. And you can see an orange ginger right there. I'm trying to remember where the other one is. How many do I have? I'm missing one somewhere. I'm sure I'll find it. But I can't off the top of my head remember where that Jinjo was at, so hopefully we run into it. Now, let me think of where I want to go right I think I'll go this way. I'll come back over here in a minute. I want to end the level getting... Oh, I know where the... Yeah, okay. I was going to say I finally remembered where it's at. It's over there under one of the pillar things. But I'm not going to do that until we transform. And I guess I won't spoil the transformation, even though it's not a big spoiler or anything. So we'll see that near the end of the episode. What I was going to say is that I want to wait to go to Mumbo until the end of the episode because we have to leave this area once again, like, after Mumbo's Mountain, I think it was. We had to leave as the ant or the termite. We have to do the same thing here but just with a different transformation. But I, I can't remember if that's four or five. Regardless, we're finally getting our Jiggy here. Is that five or six? Four or five crocodiles is that five or six Jiggies. And that turns out to be five. One little kind of interesting fact is that... The first banjo or the first game Banjo was in was actually not Banjo Kazooie. It was actually Diddy Kong Racing. That's kind of weird to think about. That kind of blew my mind as a kid. I even owned both of the games, and I never really made the connection that Banjo didn't star in his own game before he was in another game. You know, so like, oh, are you kidding me? If that hurts me because I'm standing in a swamp right there, that's gonna be ridiculous. Okay, it didn't. But yeah, so he was in Diddy Kong Racing before Banjo Kazooie. And if we walk in here, which is kind of weird in itself, you gotta walk inside this turtle. One of the racers, or the guys that you could play as in Diddy Kong Racing was Tip Top. And look who it is! I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be Tip Top. Yep, Tip Top Choir. So I was right. This guy was actually in Banj or, uh, Diddy Kong Racing. So that's kind of cool. This area is very frustrating because it's a memory game. And if you woke up just 30 minutes ago like I did, you're probably going to be, uh... See, I already forgot. This is ridiculous. Alright, fine. Actually, you know what? I did that just to show you guys what happens. No, I'm just kidding. I screwed it up. I wasn't really paying attention a second ago. There are three different... Different songs, I guess, they'll play. And you gotta, I think the first one is, yeah, like I said, three notes right there, and then the second one's gonna be five, and the last one's gonna be seven. If it turns out that I am just too incompetent to do this, I will probably just cut it out and not make you guys suffer like I'm suffering, because I don't know. Alright, yellow, red, purple, light blue, that, okay. I think I got this. I got it's like a it's like a half circle. You gotta remember, kind of make up ways to remember this as you go along. I don't know. I remember back in the day when I was a kid, I would have to get my mom to do these because I guess when I was like four or five or something, I guess I just wasn't developed enough to remember seven things in a row. That's pretty embarrassing. All right, light blue, purple. Alright, I already forgot. This is ridiculous. I'm just- I'm gonna try my hardest right here. I- like I said, guys, I already forgot, so... Here goes nothing. See, this is where I forgot. There- this is ridiculous. I feel like a little... First grader. I can't even remember, like, a seven-note thing in a row. This is- this is embarrassing. 
All right, I got this now. Light blue, purple, blue, I got that part. Okay, red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I think, I think I got it, I got it. All right, so it was blue. Wait, oh my, I forgot already. I think it was blue, purple, blue, red, and then I, I know it was this, see, also, is this pink, purple, who knows? And then was it red again? Oh, I think I might get it. it was a purple for the last one. Yes! Oh my, that was awesome. I feel like I've won something, but if you really watch that, I failed on so many levels, not being able to remember remember a five, a sequence of seven no's. Oh man. All right, so that's seven. But up here, if we jump up, we can actually get another honeycomb, empty honeycomb piece. And three more notes, and we can leave this place. I don't ever want to come in here again. That place kind of lowered my ego a couple of notches. All right, so I think we're finally done with this area. Like I said, never want to go back there again. And now we can go towards the part of the level where Mumbo is. I know I've been talking about Mumbo a lot since we started this episode, but that's because, I mean, if you look around, there's swamp lands everywhere, and there's a lot of stuff in the swamp. I think what Rareware wanted you to do... Oh, that thing better not hit me. Okay, good. What Rareware wanted you to do was, I guess, use that transformation. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you it's an alligator or a, a crocodile. I don't know which one. To, they wanted you to use it to make this level easier, I guess. But a whole lot of the level you don't even need it for, so... But a lot of the level, or a couple parts of the level, you do need it for, so... That's why we're going to do this in the first place. And if you remember that Brock... Not Brock... What am I talking about? Boulder? Rock? I guess that makes Brock now. You know, that's actually- wait a minute, Brock? That was the name of the guy in Pokemon, right? He was a Rock-type gym leader? Boulder? Rock? Maybe I've just made a connection here. Anyway, that rock that we broke at the beginning of the level has a seeker behind it, and to go into that little tunnel, we have to be a crocodile, so... Now this little thing is nerve-wracking, because you have 10 seconds to get over here and get this Jiggy. Well, I got it. If you fall off, you can try it again, but you gotta go through the whole maze again and all that. I like how they only give you 10 seconds to, to get that. And another thing that I think is kind of funny was I don't think we've seen that time jiggy switch anywhere before this. And in this episode, or this level, they decide to make it, I guess, a prominent feature. There's some way, yeah, I was gonna say, there's some way, there we go, to end the boots before the timer runs out, just if you don't need it anymore. And I think I saw a Mumbo token behind here. There we go. Like I said, don't need a whole lot of them. But I might as well get as many as we can. I'm not going to waste time going back, you know. Alright, before we talk to Mumbo, if I can get up here on this little pillar, get up here on this top thing, you can see an empty honeycomb. And we got that one, so that's pretty easy. I actually normally have a tough time with that one because... Just because of the perspective or the angle, I guess. But like, you, or like I said, you can see that we are now a crocodile or a gator. Bumbo just said he needed to do boots, by the way. Apparently, I think the point is he was trying to say that he was going to make boots out of us. Alright, so now that we've done that, before we go into the crocodile head in the middle, you can actually go inside of this thing that I'm walking on right now. We need to go back over to the little area that we were at before with the huts because we need to get some notes. And I think, like I said, there's a Jinjo over there. And, like I said, you can walk in the swamp and suffer no effects. Actually, I was gonna say, I'm not sure if there's any... I don't think there's any enemies in there, because I remember, if you remember in the Termite Hill or the Ant Hill or whatever, in Mumbo's Mountain, you could still get hurt by the ants that were in there, but I don't think there are anything, or there is anything in the water that can hurt you, so... That's pretty good. And there's a Mumbo token here, and... Oh, there's the Jinjo. I was about to get nervous for a second, I couldn't find the Jinjo. Come on, give me my Jiggy. And if, I think, yeah, it looks like there's, what, four or five notes over there? I know for a fact there are seven. I wonder if I can chomp this guy. There, got him. That's awesome. There are nine or six, I think, Jiggy or notes in the in the crocodile head. So, no, that makes sense. I finally, I got 94. I'll get six in the crocodile head, and I'll be good on Jiggy. Notes! Jeez! I will never, never get the difference between Jiggy's... <laughs> I just better stop talking. I, I just can't talk anymore. Alright, so, but now, I think, like I said, let me check. That would be... Okay, one more. 
No, in six more jiggies. One more jiggy in six more notes. God. Regardless, they're all in here. <laughs> like, I must I need to wait before I do episodes, like, longer before, like, after I wake up or something. This is just ridiculous. There's all 100 notes, and we have to play a mini game to get the night or the 10th jiggy. And this is Mr. Vile. Listen to him talk for a second. That guy has the most hilarious voice I think I've ever heard in a, a banjo game. Also, the mechanics of the game is you're supposed to run around and eat these red... I forgot what they called them, like yumblies or jumblies or something like that. You're supposed to just flat out eat more of them than, than Mr. Vile does. And that might look easy, and it is for the first round, but if you see back there, over there, there's a white pair of boots or shoes or something like that. Those actually make you really fast, but you don't learn the, that technique for a couple of levels. So I'm not sure if you're even supposed to be able to win this without having those boots, or if those boots just make it easier or not. So I'm going to try. When it really gets hard is the second and third round, but I will if I fail, I'll just keep doing it. I'll do it off camera or something and just show you me getting the jiggy because I don't want to waste a whole lot of time, you know, failing trying to get one jiggy when I can go out and do a whole lot of other stuff. All right, 10 seconds. I think we... Oh, I was about to say, we got this in the bag. We're not even winning by that much. In the second round, they kind of mix it up and make you eat white... or uh, They make you eat the red ones still, but they... I think they toss in some white ones. I'll see in just a second. Yeah, eat reds, avoid... Okay, they're yellow, whatever. This one's not too much harder, but I know I've lost this one in the past. He says, by the way, that those yellow ones are not ripe or something like that. But in the third round, you have to switch it up. Like, in the different times in the, in the third round, he'll say, Okay, eat the red ones. Okay, eat the yellow ones. So if they're not ripe now, what makes them ripe for the third round? If they look exactly the same. If you, you'll see what I mean in the third round, alright? I know I'm talking like I'm crazy here. I can't get... I can't differ differentiate Jinjos from Notes from Jiggies, and I'm talking about red jumblies and yellow things and ripeness, and what is this, a supermarket? I don't know. But this one doesn't look like it's going to be a, as much of a blowout as the first round. Oh, no, 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 no! Great. If you eat one that you're not supposed to, you stop. And you, like, hack it up and cough and stuff like that. Which is kind of funny, because in the third round, like I said, you gotta eat both of them. And if you eat one that's not right in the third round... Oh, man, my heart just stopped. I made it, though. If you eat one that's not right in the third round, like the one that is not the current one you're supposed to be eating... You're supposed to, you still stop and cough, which makes no sense. If they're both edible, why do you stop and cough? Like, you see that red thing up at the top of the screen? That makes no sense to get sick if you eat a, See, like, now I gotta eat the yellow ones. If I were to eat a, yellow, a red one right now, I would get sick and stop and cough. That makes no sense to get sick when you can eat them both, if you know what I mean. Give me that- oh, man, he's pushing me out of the way. Another important thing to know about this minigame is that you're supposed to hit X. Or, what is it, B on the Nintendo 64? When you get close to one of these things, you can't just walk into it and automatically eat it. That's one thing that really, really tripped me up as a kid. And even just doing practice, I forgot that you were supposed to do that. Because if you just walk into it, that's all you do, is walk into it. And you don't eat it, it doesn't count towards your points or anything. So, watch out for that. Oh man, I missed- give me that. I'm actually- this isn't as hard as I remember being. Apparently, it switched just before I ate that thing. So I take back whatever I said about it not being as hard. But, whatever, I guess I won. So, there's the 10th Jiggy. I finally got the name right, isn't that exciting? Mr. Vile, I'm not sure if he's in the in Banjo-Tooie or not, but I seem to remember his voice, act, voice actor, I'm putting in quotation marks here because... You know what? I don't want to play your games anymore. No, I'm chickening out, sl I'm sliding off like a slug, I don't want to play with you anymore. And I think after... I think after you quit playing with him, he'll actually start taking bites out of you and stuff like that. So you probably want to get out of there as soon as possible. But what I was saying, in Banjo-Tooie, I think the guy, or like that sound effect that he makes when he talks is used. But I'm not sure if it's the same character, if you know what I mean. But it sounds familiar, Mr. Vile. I seem to remember that from Banjo-Tooie more than Banjo-Kazooie. So for all I know, he could also be in Banjo-Tooie. But like I was saying in Treasure Trove Code, people like... What's his name? Captain Blubber are actually in Banjo-Tooie, so... 
I guess it doesn't, it's not outside of the realm of possibility for Mr. Bile to be in Banjo-Tooie. Alright, so now that we have completed this level, we're actually going to leave as the, the alligator or the crocodile or whatever. And we have to go back here to the, that tunnel that I opened up at the beginning of the episode. And I find it funny that I don't know if this is an alligator or a crocodile because I'm going to the University of Florida in about a month and their mascot is the gators. So you'd think I'd be able to tell the difference, but apparently I can't. Oh, and also another thing that I forgot to mention, in that minigame with uh, Mr. Vile there, if you eat 30 in one round, you get an achievement on the Xbox. So if you're an achievement whore, that's one Xbox achievement that you can get right there just playing Banjo-Kazooie. What in the world is this? It's a flying book? Let's go ahead and talk to him. This guy's name is Cheeto, and he's a magic spell book. And he used to be... Used to be Grunty's spell book, apparently. And I guess he got lost or something. Basically, he doesn't work for Grunty anymore. And he gives you a, a cheat. Blue eggs, we can enter on the sandcastle floor in Treasure Trove Cove. And what blue eggs does, I'm pretty sure is it either gives you double eggs, like you get double the capacity for eggs, or it gives you infinite eggs, so... Regard actually, I'm not sure how useful that is, because how often are we going to be using that many eggs, you know? But there are cheats that give you infinite health, I think, and infinite eggs, and infinite feathers, and all that kind of stuff, so... I guess, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. I know this was kind of a long, drawn-out episode, but really nothing that could be helped there. I like to finish one episode, or one level, I mean per episode, so I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie, and I'll see you guys back for the next episode.